Have you ever grabbed a hot cup of coffee first thing in the morning and thought, this is exactly what I need to start the day? Maybe it's the smell that pulls you in, the rich aroma, the comforting warmth in your hands, the, the ritual of it all. For millions of people around the world, coffee isn't just a drink. It's a daily lifeline, a source of comfort, energy, and focus. It's there for you during early meetings, late night study sessions, or that mid-afternoon crash. But what if I told you that this simple, seemingly harmless habit could be doing more behind the scenes than you ever realized? Especially if you're living with diabetes, pre-diabetes, or insulin resistance. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Diacelon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. Even one sip of coffee can set off a chain reaction in your body that affects your blood sugar, your stress hormones, and your insulin response within minutes. I know that might sound dramatic. How can one little sip of something that doesn't even have sugar in it mess with your blood sugar? Isn't black coffee supposed to be safe? Isn't caffeine something that gives you energy, not blood sugar spikes? Well, it turns out the answer is more complicated than a simple yes or no. Because coffee isn't just caffeine, and your body's response to it depends on more factors than you might think. What's wild is that studies show conflicting results. On one hand, coffee appears to spike blood glucose levels in people who already have diabetes. On the other hand, long-term research suggests that regular coffee drinkers may actually have a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the first place. How does that even make sense? Is coffee your friend or your foe? And don't even get me started on all the ways we doctor up our coffee, sugar, cream, oat milk, caramel syrup, whipped cream, sugar-free sweeteners. That one innocent looking cup could be carrying a lot more baggage than you realize. But before you panic and toss out your favorite mug, let's slow down and actually look at what happens biologically inside your body after that first sip especially if you're managing your blood sugar. In this video, we're going deep. I'm going to break down the minute-by-minute -minute impact of coffee on your metabolism, your hormones, your blood sugar levels, and your long-term diabetes risk. We'll talk about what kind of coffee matters, how your body processes caffeine, and how to make smart adjustments without giving up your favorite ritual. Whether you drink it black, sweet, decaf, or double-shot espresso, if you have diabetes, prediabetes, or you just care about your metabolic health, this video is for you. So if you've ever wondered, does coffee really spike my blood sugar? Am I better off without it? Or could it actually be helping me in the long run? You're in the right place. Stick around because you might be surprised at what's going on inside your body after just one sip. Let's start right at the beginning. Minute one, you take a sip of coffee and right away, your taste buds register the familiar, slightly bitter, rich flavor. But your mouth isn't just enjoying the flavor. It's already starting to absorb compounds like caffeine through the mucous membranes. That caffeine, along with hundreds of other compounds, makes its way through your digestive system. And within just 15 to 45 minutes, your bloodstream is full of it. You feel more alert, focused, maybe even a little wired. That's because caffeine works by blocking something called adenosine, a chemical that signals your brain that you're tired. By blocking adenosine, caffeine lets stimulating chemicals like dopamine and norepinephrine run the show, making you feel more awake and mentally sharp. But here's the thing. Those brain chemicals don't just affect how awake you feel. They also signal your body to enter a state of alertness. Your adrenal glands release adrenaline and cortisol, your fight-or-flight hormones. These hormones, in turn, tell your liver to release glycogen, a form of stored sugar, into your bloodstream to give you an energy boost because your body thinks it might need to run, fight, or act quickly. And this is where it starts to matter for people with diabetes. For someone who doesn't have blood sugar issues, this temporary boost of glucose in the bloodstream isn't a big deal. Their pancreas will kick in and release insulin, which helps the cells absorb the sugar and use it for energy. Blood sugar rises briefly, then comes back down as insulin does its job. But if you have type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, 
or even pre-diabetes, your body doesn't respond the same way. Either it doesn't produce enough insulin or your cells don't respond to it efficiently. So the sugar released by your liver just stays in your bloodstream longer. Raising your blood sugar in a way that can be problematic, especially if you're fasting, already have high glucose levels, or are drinking coffee without food. One study even found that caffeine can reduce insulin sensitivity by up to 15%, meaning your cells become even less effective at taking in sugar from the blood. That means even black coffee with no sugar or cream can indirectly raise your glucose levels, not because it contains sugar, but because it triggers your liver to release it. Now here's where the plot thickens. Despite this short-term spike in blood sugar, studies have shown that people who drink coffee regularly over time may actually be less likely to develop type 2 diabetes. That's right. Some long-term research shows that habitual coffee drinkers have a 10% to 30% lower risk of developing the condition. This seems confusing at first. How can something that spikes your blood sugar in the short term help protect against diabetes in the long term? The answer lies in what's actually inside your cup. Coffee isn't just caffeine. It's a complex mixture of over a thousand compounds, including chlorogenic acid, quinides, lignans, trigonelline, and magnesium. These compounds have been shown to improve glucose metabolism, reduce inflammation, and protect the function of your beta cells, which are the cells in your pancreas that produce insulin. For example, chlorogenic acid helps slow the absorption of carbohydrates from the digestive tract and reduces the production of glucose in the liver. Over time, these effects may improve insulin sensitivity and support better glucose regulation. So while caffeine itself might spike your levels, the full spectrum of coffee's ingredients seems to offer some protective benefits when consumed regularly and in moderation. And this brings us to the very important question of how you drink your coffee. Because the reality is, most people aren't drinking it black. Once you start adding milk, cream, sugar, flavored syrups, and whipped toppings, you're not just drinking coffee anymore. You're drinking a high-calorie, high-sugar beverage that can have a major impact on your blood glucose. A flavored iced coffee or seasonal latte from a popular coffee shop can have 30, 40, even 60 grams of sugar in a single cup. That's more than the recommended daily limit for most adults. And when you drink your sugar in liquid form, it hits your bloodstream even faster because it doesn't require digestion. This causes a quick spike in blood sugar and a surge of insulin, which can lead to an energy crash a couple hours later. And over time, it can contribute to weight gain increased insulin resistance, and harder to manage diabetes. If you're trying to stay within your blood sugar targets, these sugary drinks can make it nearly impossible. Now you might think, I use artificial sweeteners, so I'm safe, right? Well, maybe, but it's complicated. Artificial sweeteners like sucralose, aspartame, and saccharin don't raise blood sugar directly because they don't contain carbs but some studies have found that they might still influence insulin and blood sugar indirectly. For example, they can alter the composition of your gut microbiome, the collection of bacteria in your digestive tract that plays a huge role in glucose regulation and insulin sensitivity. When that microbiome is thrown off balance, it can lead to increased inflammation and reduced insulin effectiveness. Some artificial sweeteners may also trigger a small insulin response simply because your body tastes sweet and thinks sugar is coming. So while they're better than drinking 60 grams of sugar, they're not always as harmless as we think, especially if you're drinking multiple cups a day or adding sweeteners to everything. Another factor people often overlook is timing. When you drink your coffee matters. Drinking coffee first thing in the morning on an empty stomach can lead to higher blood sugar spikes compared to drinking it after a balanced meal. When there's food in your stomach, especially food with protein, healthy fats, and fiber, it slows down the absorption of caffeine and helps stabilize blood sugar. Think of it like putting a cushion between the coffee and your bloodstream. But when you drink coffee on an empty stomach, the caffeine hits hard and fast. Your stress hormones rise sharply, your liver releases sugar quickly, and you might feel jittery, anxious, or even experience a blood sugar crash later. This is especially important for people doing intermittent fasting. If your first intake of the day is just coffee, it could be doing more harm than good for your glucose levels. 
Try pairing your morning coffee with something like eggs, avocado toast on whole grain bread, or Greek yogurt with nuts, and you might find your blood sugar stabilizes more effectively. Now let's talk about one of the most underrated benefits of coffee for people with diabetes, exercise performance. When used strategically, caffeine can actually help people with diabetes manage their blood sugar by making it easier to move more. Caffeine increases stamina, reduces the perception of fatigue, and helps your body burn fat more efficiently. All of these effects make it a great pre-workout beverage. For people with diabetes, physical activity is one of the most powerful tools for lowering blood sugar and improving insulin sensitivity. So if your cup of coffee helps you get out the door for a brisk walk, a strength training session, or even just active chores, then it's playing a helpful role in your routine. Just keep in mind that caffeine is a diuretic, meaning it makes you pee more, so be sure to drink water too. And if you're on medications like insulin or sulfonylureas, monitor your glucose levels closely because caffeine plus exercise can lower your blood sugar more than expected and potentially lead to hypoglycemia. So there you have it. Who would have thought that something as small and ordinary as a single sip of coffee could kick off such a complex, fascinating, and sometimes unpredictable chain reaction in your body? It's kind of wild when you think about it. That familiar ritual, waking up, reaching for your cup, breathing in that deep roasted aroma, it feels so comforting, so harmless. But for people living with diabetes or anyone concerned about their blood sugar, that simple act is anything but neutral. It's a biochemical event, and how your body handles it depends on everything from your genetics to your gut health, your sleep, stress levels, what you ate yesterday, and what else is in your cup. The truth is, coffee isn't inherently good or bad for diabetes. It's both. In the short term, caffeine can increase blood sugar levels, impair insulin sensitivity, and trigger stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. But in the long term, coffee also brings a powerful lineup of antioxidants and plant compounds that seem to support metabolic health, reduce inflammation, and even protect the very cells that produce insulin. That's why the key isn't fear or avoidance. It's awareness, personalization, and balance. Maybe for you, that means switching to half-calf or decaf. Maybe it means drinking coffee with a high-protein breakfast instead of on an empty stomach. Maybe it means cutting back on the flavored syrups and trying cinnamon or vanilla extract instead. Or maybe it means being more mindful about what that daily iced latte is really doing to your blood sugar and making informed choices instead of autopilot ones. Because that's what managing diabetes really comes down to. Not perfection, but paying attention. And here's the good news. You're not powerless in this. You're learning. You're experimenting. You're tuning into your body, testing what works, adjusting when things don't, and finding what fits your unique lifestyle. That's the real win. Because when you understand what's going on under the surface, you stop feeling like things are happening to you and start taking charge of your own health journey. So the next time you grab your morning brew, I want you to pause for just a second. Not to second guess yourself, but to acknowledge that this tiny everyday moment is part of a bigger picture. You have the tools, the knowledge, and the power to make it work for you, not against you. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing, and sharing it with someone you care about. I'd love to hear from you in the comments too. How does coffee affect your blood sugar? Have you noticed changes depending on what kind you drink or when you drink it? Your story could help someone else who's just starting to figure this stuff out.